Hi, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Holly and today I have something brand new to share with you. I bought a one of those 12 by 12 Glowforge auras. This is my only Glowforge that I have ever purchased and it's also the only laser cutter. So I'm experimenting, 100% experimenting. I have no idea what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. But I did double check to make sure I knew exactly what material I could use in this machine. And I went to Michael's and I bought the 12 by 12 boards that were specifically for the Aura from Michael's. So that's what I'm using today. And then I went to the Glowforge um, website to find one of their images for my very first one. Now you can buy images on Etsy and um, upload those into the Glowforge site and then your machine will cut that as well. Um, but just to make sure I knew everything was like perfectly lined up with specifically for the Aura, I went to the Glowforge website and I purchased this one right here. The round one that says Mrs. Williams class. I purchased that file. So it looks like this without the name on it. And so I cut this onto my Glowforge and then I added my name. And so stick around, I'll show you how I did that. So once you purchase whichever image or file that you want or upload, it is in your design section of the Glowforge page. And then you just load it, it says rendering your design, and then it will go through the scanning and calibration setup. Now my Glowforge, um, I had some issues getting everything to work immediately. You can't see the image. My camera was not pulling up the image of my wood. And so I had to reset it, unplug everything, and then reset it. So right now I'm attempting to cut this. It takes 52 minutes to cut it and 41 seconds. I'm attempting to cut this without being able to see my image. And so I guessed where that wood was, and that was a mistake. I should have pulled my image down. So here's what it did, it cut, well, you can't really see yet, but this is real time. This is how fast it actually moves. So I'm speeding this up and it's gonna take like nine seconds to cut this wood out because I did like super fast time. So hold on, let me speed this up. So here you go, 52 minutes sped up into about nine-ish seconds or so. And then once I take out these little pieces, you're gonna see that the top portion of this is, the camera finally starts working. And then you can see the top portion of this um, kind of got lost in the image and so it didn't cut a complete circle. I went over the board a little bit with the diode laser. So here I'm popping out the pieces. The easier way would be, I think, to take out the metal tray and then slide those little teeny pieces off onto your counter space or workspace or whatever then pop off the excess board. But of course I didn't do that. So here's the piece cut off at the very tippy top. Now my camera works for the second circle. So this is the bottom half of that same design. Nothing got cut off. So then I went back in and I repositioned my wood. So I had the excess down there at the bottom so I could use that and not waste any of the wood. So I'm gonna put my name down there. Going into the fonts that is that are already provided with Glowforge, the um, program. And then I'm going to find one that I like, position that onto the bottom and then cut that. Double check that you're cutting and not engraving. Right now, the settings on the left, right underneath where it says um, which wood choice I'm using, you can see that it's engraving. So right now, my setting says that I want to engrave my name. As soon as I click and change it to cut, it'll change my dark letters into outlined letters, and then you know that you're good to go. So then you just go over and wait for your machine to scan and calibrate and then the little button print will stop moving it'll give you the how long it'll tell you the time how long it's going to take for you to cut your whatever image you're cutting so for my name it's going to take 12 minutes and 40 seconds and then you walk over to your machine and you push the button the button will be glowing and so you push the button and your machine does the work for you and you just sit back and wait once all your pieces are cut, you are ready to start assembling. So you can use like E6000 glue, you can use wood glue. I'm using neither. I'm actually going to assemble with UV resin. So <laughs> let me show you how I paint these items first. I'm gonna pop out the little pieces for the pencil. I'm gonna pop out the apple. The apple's gonna be, um, everything's gonna be spray painted, outlined black. So the apple, the ruler, the pencil, and my name and where it says class, those are all gonna be black. 
I'm gonna use just black spray paint to paint those. And then the apple, I start to use an acrylic red paint initially to paint it, and then I just go over the top of it with a red spray paint because the acrylic paint was not giving it the coverage I wanted. And then the ruler, I am leaving it the wood color, and then the pencil, I'm going to paint yellow with dark lead, and then a pink eraser, and then a silver piece but I'm gonna start by pa painting the base white. So the wood has um, two layers of protective paper over the front and the back. So I'm gonna peel off one of those. And then I didn't even sand it, really. I guess you should sand it, but I didn't. And then I'm just gonna spray paint, I mean, um, paint it with a white acrylic paint. I'm gonna keep adding layers of paint until I like the coverage and then set that aside and begin working on the other pieces. Okay, these lines are going to be blue, so I'm peeling off one side of the paper, the top, the right side. I'm gonna peel off that paper, not sanding anything. I didn't sand anything. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take it outside. I'm gonna use a blue spray paint and just spray it two times. So I'm gonna spray it once, let it dry, spray it again, and then that's it. And then I'm gonna set that aside and then begin working on the other pieces. Same thing here, peel off all the paper on the right side of the wood that needs the paint, and that's going to be black. This whole thing is going to be black. After I have that spray painted and set aside to dry, I'm just um, taking my acrylic paints that I'm going to be using for the rest of the little pieces. It's like puzzle pieces. So I'm using the yellow for the pencil, the red is for the apple, the green is for the stem of the apple, there's going to be a brown for the stem. I mean, the green is for the leaf of the apple, the brown is going to be for the stem, and then I'm going to have the pink for the eraser and silver, like a metallic silver spray paint is what I used for the metal piece of the pencil. Pencil. Once all my pieces were painted and dry, I started assembling them. So I'm just popping them in literally like a puzzle piece, making sure that those yellow pieces, I know exactly where everything goes because I'm going to be using UV resin to stick these to the backboard. And I want to make sure I know exactly which piece goes where because they are not all cut the same. And I don't want to accidentally set those in the UV resin and have to lift them back out of the UV resin and leave a sticky, icky mess. The letters in my name were so narrow and there were so many of them that I just stuck them to a piece of masking tape before I took them outside and spray painted. <laughs> so now I'm ready to glitter and epoxy the base that I have already painted white with the acrylic paint. So I am using a chunky glitter and a fine glitter to make my own mix with high sparkle to mix into my UV resin. And I'm just gonna spread that all over the base, let it sort of flatten out a little bit. And then I'm going to start piecing the top layer over it. So I'm gonna piece it together exactly how it's gonna stick permanently. I don't want this layer of UV resin to be a super thick, um, layer. I don't want it to squish out, seep out over the sides. I don't want it to kind of push up over the top of the pieces once I begin layering those on top. I want it to work as like a very light layer of adhesive. So right now it's just in liquid form. Once I hit it with that UV resin light, it's going to harden and it's going to not go anywhere. So I'm going to lay the pieces, make sure I take the paper backing off all the painted pieces, layer them on like a puzzle, make sure I like exactly how everything is sitting, make sure it's all lined up. Then I'm gonna hit it with the UV resin light and they are going nowhere. I accidentally spray painted this little red piece blue, so I had to take that outside really quickly and go over it with red spray paint because spray paint, I forgot that that was supposed to be the vertical line for the piece of paper and those are red. Then I just continued to assemble, so I placed all the little pieces where they go, make sure I gave them just a slight little gentle push with my finger to make sure they were actually touching and sitting down in the UV resin a little bit. After I have all those pieces on, I'm gonna hold my UV lamp over the top of it for um, two counts of 60, so 60 and then let it recount 60. I think the hardest part of this project was assembling my name. 
I, if I had to do it over again, I would cut my name taller and um, maybe with a different font. I'm not sure. Maybe a cursive font so that everything is linked. All the letters are linked together. Uh, that might look a little bit, I mean, this does look cute, but it was really hard to place the letters because they're so small that they don't, they're not big enough to sort of teeter on both the horizontal blue line above the letters and the blue line below. If they were large enough to teeter on those letters, I could glue both the top and the bottom to the letters and they would be a little more sturdy. But because my letters were short, I had to place two scrap pieces of wood behind them to keep them flush to that bottom blue horizontal bar, if this makes sense. And then I'm gonna just be gluing E6000 to the letters that, the portion of the letter that actually touches that bottom blue bar. So once I lift out and remove the scrap pieces of wood, really my letters are just gonna be suspended by just a little bit of glue holding them to that horizontal blue bar. So if they get knocked or pushed or fall down or someone steps on it, my letters will break and I will have to glue them back together. So if I were going to sell this to somebody, I would definitely make the letters bigger or maybe cursive so they all stuck together somehow to make it more supportive or I could actually cut more layers of wood to like um, make it more 3D where on the underside where um, the letters are not glued. So at least if I, if I learned how to do that, then all my letters would um, be flush and very well supported. But for now, this is what we're doing. And this will just, it'll just have to work. It'll just be okay. So I just continued going right to left, kind of moving the letters and respacing if I thought maybe there was gonna be an overcrowding issue and um, glued at the bottom of each of those down until I got to the very last one. And that letter M is sitting over a dot and the, the bottom blue line. So that one is not gonna break if it gets dropped. That one is very well supported. So after I have these glued, I'm just gonna let it sit overnight and let the E6000 completely harden. Okay, so this is the very next morning and I came back and now I need to touch up around the edge and paint that very tippy top there, the same blue color as the bottom. So first I'm going to apply, um, it is a foil adhesive to those dots because I thought that the silver was too dark and I wanted to make it more eye-catching. And so I'm gonna apply that adhesive to the top of the dots only, and then I'm gonna use my um, foil transfer right there just to rub over the top and it's gonna make it look shiny and silver. So I'm doing that first. Now I'm using a brown acrylic paint to go over the edge just to clean it up, get rid of that white, and just to make sure that everything is kind of like a wooden color. Next, I'm going to take that blue spray paint that I used for the lines, and I'm gonna spray it in a plastic container. And with a paintbrush, I'm gonna dip into that blue spray paint and um, paint the very top of this where it just plain, is plain wood up there, the part where it got cut off because I didn't have my my wooden piece lined up under the laser. When that is dry, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna go over it three times with a Krylon um, triple thick clear spray paint to seal everything in. And I tried so hard to make a bow that would stick to the top of this but not overlap the apple or the pencil too much. And I failed miserably at every attempt and my my glue gun was not, the glue was not getting hot. And so the glue just kept falling off. And then the glue pulled off some of that blue spray paint. And so I had to repaint it, take it outside again, respray it with a triple thick. And it was super frustrating. And so I just thought, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to drill a hole right in the center there. So I measured um, the distance between that top blue line and I drilled a hole and I'm just going to poke some wire through it to create a little hanger and I'm just going to tie a ribbon to the wire. 
That's as simple as it can get. And it worked out just fine. So I don't know why I tried to make it so complicated. So I'm just bending wire. I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just literally poking it through and then pulling the wire out the other end, wrapping it around itself and then tying the ribbon to the top of it. And I am saying, good to go, it is done. So other than the difficult ribbon situation and me chopping off the top of the the circular image and then uh, what was the other thing? And my name being just a little bit too small. This was a really easy project and it was very fun to make. And I love that the UV resin held all the images securely. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I hope I was able to teach you something and that I have encouraged you to make a sign or go out and try a glow forge. It's really fun. And let me know if you have any questions or comments below and all the supplies will be linked, of course. Thank you so much for watching.